Hey guys, Gameboy3800 here once again back playing some more automation. We're continuing the Let's Make Giant Engine series. Last time out we made the biggest engine of all with the Giant V16. Not the biggest it could have been. No car can fit the biggest V16 unless there's a new mod for one that I haven't seen yet. But yeah. Now though we're going to scale things back down a bit and go back down to four cylinders. That's right, from 16 to four. And work on some flat configurations. I think if we go ahead and do something a little bit uh, more usual. Maybe some vans for this series. Where's some vans? If only there's a body type for vans. There is a body type for vans. Awesome. All right, so if we go ahead and do a 88 van here, that should be big enough for the largest flat four. Have a wishbone all around, that'll work. Uh, let's not forget the model year should be 2020. Same for the engine, there we go. I'm gonna go for Boxer 4. Ooh, I was not expecting that, wow. All right, we need a different van style body that'll fit this engine. Let's just click one until we get something that works. There's a good, but they seem too big. There we go. That one seems more sensible and it'll fit. Yay. All right. Let's make everything as light as possible and up the quality. No turbo, gonna keep everything nice and stuck so we can see the engine's performance in their purest form. You can get race exhaust on everything now. That must have been an update. Cause it used to be you could only have short cast on a lot of stuff. We can get dual exhaust on them, so that's something. But yeah, with four cylinders, can we get higher than 6,900? No. Gonna have to go with 6800 for the flat motor here. Is there a quality piece I missed? Nope, I don't think I did. So it's gonna be lower RPM than most every motor except for the first inline three. I was bugged somehow and couldn't get above 2000, and even then it still had damage here. So, rip. Oh well. And still go ahead, pump up ignition timing by like a whole lot. Uh, there's some fuel mixture. We're almost up to 500 horsepower. That's not too bad. And there we are, over 500. Can we get 600 on four cylinders? What kind of power did uh, our inline four have? All right, come on, 600 horsepower for four cylinders. Ah, not quite, not yet. 588, there we go. 629, it might be the same we've had for the uh, inline four actually. Oh well, we'll figure it out. I can look back at the footage. It sounded pretty quiet, actually. 
I didn't accidentally leave any mufflers or anything on, so I don't know why it was so quiet, but oh well, who cares? Seems like we can do either style of van. Let's go ahead and do the people mover variant. Trim here has got to be pumped up. I think we are good to have minimal wheel archers on this model because it's got lower power than the monstrosity that was last episode's V16. The trim slots on this one can be, it can be kind of blue. There we go. Alright, headlights time. I think we can go with something more modern looking. Something like this. These look like they would fit well on a van. Less of an angle. Yeah, there we go. That looks pretty good. The grill doesn't need to be as insane as it was on the last vehicle. And in fact, I believe we should be able to duplicate it to the other side as well. There we go, that'll work. Not. Should have something for the bottom though. There we go, that doesn't look too terrible. We can go ahead and put a number plate on here. I don't know what that says, but oh well. We need some door handles now. That can be just something basic, I guess. Next up, we need some wing mirrors. It's modern, so it'll get the regular shaped mirrors. It's a big car, so big mirrors. We need a tailgate a handle as well. There we go. Tail lights while we're back here. These will work just fine. nice and we can go ahead and add a basic spoiler up top here I guess it would have to be there, so it doesn't interfere with the door there. Maybe it could be on the door. Hmm. Wish you could morph the wing to however you wanted it to be. I think that's going to be how we have it. Not quite. There we go. Good enough. It'll work. Exhaust. 
This will be a more standard exhaust. That should work, right? Makes sense to have it there. It is a straight through pipe though. There we go. A wheel drive, automatic. It can be a five speed up to 137. Seems fine to me. Differential automatic locker. Or er, no, it's not making a horrible amount of power. A little bit more power to the front. Makes sense for a van. That can be medium compound. Makes sense for this car. There's a wide tires. Uh, 250s all around, maybe. There we go. That makes not terrible sense. Wheels are fine as they are. Quality up. I think solid discs all around will be fine. Doesn't need a skid tray. Everything up because why not? It's a people mover. Seats eight. Seats nine. There we go. Perfect. Standard. Basic. Basic power steering, maybe some ABS. Just some basic stuff around here. We'll make it utility. How's it look for the ride height? Well, wow, very high ride height. Doesn't need to be that high. We'll do eight. It gives a little bit of travel. Very nice. Markets, nothing. It's too expensive. Yay. Let's put you in the beam. Big flat four van. And export the beam. All right. I guess I'll see you in Beam and Shoot Drive. Well, we've got our not too awe inspiring minivan ready to go. And it is pretty quiet. I think probably the quietest vehicle I've tested so far. But it's not meant to be an ultra powerful car. I mean, it's still got, what, 600 horsepower, so it's still pretty quick. got the same issue as the uh, inline four motor that it just kind of stays at the red line for a long time but other than that with this more front wheel drive bias it does seem to handle itself better brakes are not as great I will be honest But for a people carrier, it does have all the seats, so it's definitely a heavy car. It's handling its weight pretty good. It gets up to speed nice and quickly. How will it do down the street here? Tight 
Top shot at 135. And it's not got the grip to do that turn at that speed. But I didn't expect it to. This is actually a sensible car, I think. Let's go ahead and jump it, because that's what you do in a sensible car. It actually does handle very nice. For a normal car, it's not too bad at all. Compared to the big V16, it's kind of relaxing. And then we do this. We gave it a dent on the roof like it was run over by a monster truck or something. That's funny. I guess if you guys enjoyed this little flat four experiment, then do go ahead and leave a like, favorite, comment, share, and of course don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks, Gameboy. I'll see you in the future.